All right. Uh, could one of us please lead in prayer? Anybody who's able to? Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we submit all of us into your mighty presence. Lord, we pray as we learn from your word today. Lord, you speak to us, Lord God. Help us to know you. Help us know you better. And help all of us to uh, listen to your voice and apply this in our life, God. We pray for Pastor Nancy. We pray that you would enable her to reveal your word to us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. So uh, just in follow-up to what we studied in the last two weeks, which is about uh, the uh, deliverance model, one is a one-step model and the other one is the process model, the 10 steps of uh, Pablo Botari. Um, we've seen, you know, we've seen how we must uh, speak to the individual, take the spirit, bring the spirit under subjection so that it does not manifest and disrupt the deliverance process. And, you know, then of course, uh, close all open doors and finally you know when we have done that we evict the demon spirit out of the person but i just want to take a few moments to continue talking about the post ministry care uh, after deliverance so uh, i am sure all of you will agree it's really important for us to look at the person as a person okay so once uh, deliverance is through, it's not like, oh, yeah, you're free now. You're, you know, you just go do your thing. But we've said, we've seen in Matthew 12 how the demon spirits, they go, they find seven more uh, spirits more wicked than them. They come back to occupy the same um, place, which would be the person, the individual that uh, you know, they just left. So please make sure that Whenever we have deliverance going on, you think about the person even after praying for them. Okay, uh, if at all we have a team uh, that you know we can connect the person to, maybe you're a busy pastor, you know, you're just praying over people and then you're done, you're done with that. But in a church setting, it's always possible for us to follow up with that individual. So uh, if we can have some teams, if we can train them up, you know, maybe um, the extent to which they minister is just to say, okay, have you received the Lord Jesus? Can we pray for you? And uh, once a person receives the Lord Jesus, minister the baptism in the Holy Spirit to that person. Maybe that's the level to which the team can help, but that would be really helpful you know, to ensure that this individual is now followed up post-ministry care. No, we, we call it that and ensure that they are born again. That is if they want to accept Christ. We cannot force anybody. So uh, once they accept Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, then guide them on being connected to a good Bible-believing church. Uh, also develop personal you know, practices where they study God's word, pray and all of that. Okay, So that way what happens? You know, they will continue to grow strong. The place is swept clean. Remember, that's what the verse says. So the place is swept clean, but it's also now occupied by the Holy Spirit. And the person is becoming stronger and stronger in their spirit. So the demon spirits cannot come back. So that's the best way in which they can continue to live free from those oppressing demonic spirits. So very, very important, post-ministry care. Deliverance, when we think of deliverance, always think of post-ministry care. Okay, So you cannot separate the two. We have to look into post-ministry care in settings like the church setting where it is, it is possible you know, to... Uh, <coughs> minister to individuals so uh, never forget that now in some situations the person may require a greater psychological support or counseling support or uh, you know maybe in certain situations uh, there is sinful addictive behavior on the part of the person so these are a little more complicated. You know, all believers, your normal believers who are helping you to pray for somebody's salvation and um, 
praying for baptism in the holy spirit they may not be able to help in these sort of issues so it would be helpful either yourself if you are uh, trained and you know you know you can handle uh, something like this addictive behavior counseling people with addictive behavior and all then you step into it but if you feel like you don't have the capacity to do it then don't take it on best is to refer them to a christian uh, counselor here in apc we also have a a wing called as chrysalis life which is our counseling um, wing they help us you know they're all trained professional uh, counselors and the plus point is they are believers you know, and they also believe in the work of the holy spirit so it becomes a lot easier because they take time it put uh, it might take you know a couple of sessions or many sessions uh, to to uh, minister to a person you know with addictive behavior and things like that so so deliverance is we must never think of it as i cast out the spirit one step it's over that's not how it works if we really care for the person to to continue living free then it's going to take extra effort on the part of the person ministering either you do all the post ministry care if you feel that you you lack the capacity you know because you need technical um, or experiential uh, sort of uh, capacity then you send it send the person to somebody who can help but ensure that these things are done only then it makes sense uh, having cast out the demon spirits okay so uh, let me just pause and uh, give you a few moments if there's anything you want to share or ask Okay, so once that is done, the next few sections are fairly um, easy for us. Uh, I, I'll probably just go over it quickly, and who knows? You know, we might just finish uh, our classes today itself. So, yeah, anything about casting out demons, ministering deliverance? Okay, if you're clear, well and good. Um, let's move on to the next uh, chapter here, which is chapter 14. This is about exercising authority over territories and regions. Okay, so as part of spiritual warfare, we talked about ground level warfare till now. Okay, and I told us uh, it's more to do with individuals and at a personal level. Now we're talking about you know, spiritual warfare for territories and regions. Um, so, again, whatever we have learned about authority, right, it applies uh, at any extent because the Lord Jesus has won over Satan on the cross once for all. And that gives us dominion, authority, power, which we can use against the enemy no matter which level. You know, he is coming against us. So we are already victorious. Even if it is, you know, a spiritual warfare for territories, you know, we are up for it. And we have been sent by the Lord Jesus you know, to take the gospel into all the world and to make disciples. So as his body, we walk with the authority of who? The head. So if my head has authority, obviously my body has authority because it is attached to the head. So in the same way, the Lord Jesus, when he says, before he says, okay, go into all the world, make disciples in Matthew 28. He says, all authority on heaven and earth, it has been given to me. So if all authority has been given to Jesus, has it been given to the body of Christ? Has it been given to you and me who are part of the body of Christ? Very much so. And so we can exercise this authority over uh, territories. So when it comes to spiritual uh, warfare, when it comes to taking over territories, you know, what are some of the ways in which, practical ways in which uh, we can impact 
you know regions now when i say regions it could mean um a certain region that involves a couple of countries or it could mean a country by itself it could also mean you know a state or uh, cities villages a group of villages so any region take any region for that matter uh, we can impact it for the gospel sake so uh, always you know one of the things that we have to remember is when we talk about you know we'll start using the term transformation transformation of the region uh, it is more of a spiritual matter than a physical matter now we must not confuse this with you know invading um, regions and making them christian that's not that's not at all what we are talking about what we are talking about is in a spiritual sense as the lord jesus said you know we need to pray thy kingdom come so which kingdom are we talking about we are talking about the kingdom of heaven coming into the kingdom of the earth so in nations for example when the kingdom of heaven comes in the standards of the kingdom of this world will change so let's say in a given nation there is corruption there is disorder there are crimes there are um, you know there's a lot of disrespect towards the weaker uh, weaker uh, sections of the society what happens when the kingdom of god comes there is transformation transformation into um the standards of the kingdom of god which are what justice righteousness peace you know so that is the transformation that we are talking about so you know it's very clear cut we're talking about a spiritual transformation and for such a transformation to take place at the level of large populations now how do we uh, impart such a transformation in individuals preach the gospel disciple people okay how how do we disciple people we disciple them according to the word according to the work of the spirit and as that is going on you know here are lives of individuals that are uh, transforming into what god wants them to do so they start living a transformed life um now if this has to be done for an entire nation what is it going to take how can you have you know millions of people in in a particular and even billions right india 1.2 billion people how can there be a spiritual transformation of this sort you know that takes place so for a spiritual transformation we always begin with prayer we always begin with um that's spiritual warfare okay so uh that's how it starts off now we're going to look at let's come down a little bit to the city level and you know begin to talk from there and maybe that can be um uh, taken up even at the uh, state level national level or whichever level okay so let's let's start from the city level and see what are some practical things now we've understood that it's a spiritual matter above all no matter what else we do in in practical ways what activities we do in the city mainly it is a spiritual matter okay so we will have to engage in prayer and a spiritual warfare so coming to city transformation now how can we see the lives of many people in the city transformed um uh, in a uh, you know in a in a given period of time how can that happen for that the first thing is that for city transformation to take place we have to have every believer in the city transformed now you tell me how can we have the church now i'm just using the term the church i know there are many uh, local churches but the the term church i'm using as the representative you know the representation of all the body of christ in that city or let's say the city wide church the city wide church if believers are weak if they themselves are not transformed by god's word how can how can we see city transformation so the first step is 
the transformation of every believer so for the transformation of every believer what is required you know, each believer needs to be equipped empowered you know, god's word uh, reaching the believers so um, you see that's why like if you look at apc uh, and even our website you can you can go and have a nice look at it there are lots of resources and these resources are not just for uh, people who are part of apc as a local church anybody can use it because we are all the body of christ okay um those who believe in the lord jesus those who are saved you are uh, citizens of uh, the kingdom of god then yes you know you are the body of christ and whatever resources we have you know let that be used to equip let that be used to empower every believer and when believers are empowered what tends to happen they become stronger right in the things of god they become stronger in the work of the spirit and that's where the transformation will start so without a strong local body without a strong city wide church without individual strong believers you know it's very hard to think of taking over a, a city in the spiritual sense so that is the first thing that we need to focus on the second one the the city transformation it is going to be a strategic um it's going to be a combined effort of st strategic movement that is planned and executed with divine wisdom and the leading of the spirit so you see sometimes what happens is we pray and then we say okay now that we have been praying god will do it you know it is going to be a sovereign move of god i don't know if you all have heard that term sovereign move of god by that um it it is like one of those revivals uh, like the welsh revival we talked about it so there was uh, uh, evan roberts roberts was praying and then the 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 spirit of god fell upon the people and you know hundreds and thousands of people started gathering in in meetings and they started repenting of their sins so something sovereign like a move of the spirit took place in those times can that happen today yes it can happen so we look forward for a sovereign work of god however we can also be strategic and have plans for city transformation so by that we mean you know how can we go about um transforming let's say the lives of uh, youth maybe youth are engaged in um Uh, addictive behavior they lack purpose in their lives they um you know they have experienced different pleasures and they feel that there's no hope even though you know the world offers you all these pleasures there's no substance is it in it you know, so they're going through all this crisis identity crisis and uh, also um, uh, a sense of discouragement by looking at the uh, the condition around them okay so how can we touch the lives of young people for us you know who are looking for city transformation we'll have to be strategic so there can be certain things that we do to impact the lives of young people i'm just saying uh, uh, randomly i'm just giving you some examples maybe you know we can have a program that uh, that speaks of the purpose for life okay and we take this program to schools and colleges no wherever whichever school college is open great you know we can actually take this to schools and colleges so what's happening we are there to tell the uh, children or the the students there that god has created you for a purpose so don't be discouraged god has a plan for your life there is hope you can work hard and you know we could also impart many principles of god's word which will help them things like integrity hard work good habits you know health taking care of your health so many things that we can actually teach the young people what is happening yes can god move can a revival come very much but we are also doing our part to transform the lives of young people for the better okay through our planned strategic efforts so it's just a small example now there can be many such 
strategic things that the body of Christ involves in that can actually uh, address you know, uh, the problem issues in a given city. Maybe there is an issue of corruption. Now, what if the, the whole uh, citywide church stands firm in leading a life of integrity? Okay, so the, the city will be thrilled to see, oh, wow, anyone who says they are a believer in Jesus is not taking a bribe. You know, they are paying their taxes. They are, they are you know, doing things right. Their, their accounts are clean. What's going on? So by being very strategic, right, in what we do, uh, we can impact the citywide church. So, uh Mainly, you know, strategic applies more to programs and things like that. Okay, more than just uh, having the right lifestyle. So you could you could think of you know things like that where um, you know uh, certain programs are implemented and that begins to affect people's lives. So one I said is we want the city to be transformed. Then believers' lives have to be transformed. Second is we need to have some strategic plans. Then you know it will uh, and those plans implemented in a with divine wisdom. See, one thing is to have a plan. It's a totally different thing to do that plan. Okay, we can have a beautiful plan. It can sit on the shelf and make no difference. But we need both. We need a plan, and that needs to be worked out as well. So um, you know this way we can impact our city. Third one is that. We need to leverage our spiritual resources, okay? Uh, because it's a spiritual effort, so we want to leverage uh, our spiritual resources. By that, we simply mean um, learning God's word and applying it. So, things about spiritual warfare, you know, as we learn uh, different things, okay, we must pray. Uh, how? What if you know the city comes together, everyone comes together, and you have times of prayer? I know that in the last. Uh, prayer and intercession uh, course we had discussed about you know places in south america where they've had uh, a great move of god taking place when uh, the citywide church gathered together and you know, they had uh, all night prayers in stadiums and they saw uh, you know the the um, condition changing there was a lot of corruption drug trafficking murders things like that but all that came down once the church started praying together. They started making the spiritual effort, uh, as you call it, uh, in impacting the, the city. So you know, we really need to leverage our spiritual resources and also implement you know, whatever we learn through that. So coming to strategies, I told you, you know, more about planning and doing something. So how do we um, strategize and make an impact? in, in uh, the city. Now, why are we, first of all, why are we talking about transforming the city? See, if going back to Genesis 1, where if God created us, he created us for what? To have dominion, to have authority, subdue, right? Uh, you bring the rule and reign of God on the earth. That, that is God's desire for every human being who has been created to bring his rule and reign. We are representatives of God. And that is why uh, while we live in the world and we know that the world is tainted by sin, it is our responsibility to bring the spiritual kingdom of God in our midst. And we are here to demonstrate the dominion of this kingdom. And that is why we have a mandate for city transformation. We can't just say that, okay, you know, personal at a personal level, I'm binding every demon that is uh, affecting me. And binding every demon that is affecting my family, we are happy. You know, we are prosperous. We go to church. We have our spiritual activities. Happy life. Okay, that's it. Let the let the city around. Not what we are called to. We are called to uh, be that seed where God has planted us. That we have to bring transformation to the world around us. You know, that's why salt and light. Yes, you may be just, you know, a, 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 what do you say, a trace of salt or uh, just a, a little bit of a light somewhere. But then through you, God is bringing 
that change in the world around you uh, and so you know we have to live a life that is going to transform the world around us so coming to strategy strategy for city transformation so how do we do this let's see what what uh, we can pick up from the bible you know the bible teaches us to uh, represent the kingdom as i told us just now matthew 5 verses 13 through 16 if you read there we are told you are the salt of the earth you know you are the light of the world so we are representatives of the kingdom of god in this world okay so we must never forget that we might think that you know i i'll just live my life however i want but no it is not benefiting the kingdom of god in any way and it is not you know impacting uh, touching the lives of the people around us we all have the great commission where we have to bring people um, you know to the the kingdom of light so how are we going to do that if we ourselves don't live out this life that uh the bible talks about so all of us are salt and light and we are supposed to live the gospel when we study about the kingdom of god uh jesus used parables to describe the kingdom he mentioned the kingdom is initially a very small thing so in matthew 13 verse 33 he talks about the leaven okay a little bit of leaven what does leaven do leaven is like the it is the yeast which we use in uh, uh, bread making when you put a little bit of uh, yeast then you will have the dough rise you know and then it it is um, uh, perfect to be baked now for us indians here we are more familiar with things like dosa so you put uh, you know so, some something that goes into is the the baking um, um soda and things like that you put it into the uh the the batch and what happens you know it works through the batch and makes it uh makes it you know it it's perfect uh um version so the yeast initially when you put it how much do we use we use very little of it but finally when you are cooking that product you know it has worked through the entire batch now the same thing is applicable for a child of god or the kingdom of god the kingdom of god and the principles of the kingdom may seem small they may seem um you know the the culture of the kingdom might seem very insignificant however when we apply it you know you can actually see the impact of that culture everywhere i still remember uh, i mean there are many examples i can give you but i'm just suddenly that came to my mind so i i'll just share that there was a campaign um, which was um, uh, i heard of this through a friend of mine they started a campaign in a church okay and this was started for women and it's called dark is beautiful because um apparently you know the some women in, in that church they they uh, recognized that there was a lot of uh, um discrimination that was taking place because of the skin skin tone okay uh, of women and so um you know in culturally culturally some of the um women were oppressed they were you know in their minds thinking oh i don't have a fair skin tone so uh, you know i am not beautiful and things like that so uh one church um, and some women in the church they started this this whole campaign called as dark is beautiful and i remember at one point people people heard of that campaign and uh, you know it just picked up it just picked up to a point where schools and colleges were calling these these people to come and do sessions about what is the real meaning of beauty is it you know that beauty is not skin deep you know it's way more than that so uh, yeah so then that happened and at one point uh this this thing about dark is beautiful it was on the news so i heard the person from that particular church you know answering news anchors on why this was started and you know how this is making an impact in the lives of you know young girls in schools uh, who 
are now taught that it's not about your skin color, but it's more about the person that you are. See, it's a small example, small example of a biblical truth, because what do we learn in scripture? You know, we are all made in the image of God and uh, our beauty comes from that. It's not necessarily the external. But you see, when when there is a principle from God's word, this is about identity but it could be as i've been saying about you know financial integrity it could be uh, about uh, <clears throat> you know uh, uh, truth we have a lot of research that goes on scientific papers that are written um, you know, hopefully you know everything is being done with integrity so the principles of god's word bring forth righteousness and we as God's people, wherever we are, okay, not, not just inside the church, but outside the church, we can impact culture. I might be that one leaven, okay, in my culture, in my college. But what happens is through me, it begins to affect the entire culture. If I um, uh, walk with holiness, Maybe in, in my college, everyone's doing their own thing. But as believers, maybe there are two or three believers, they are standing up for you know, the, the um, right things. They don't engage in um, you know, uh, unholy uh, activities. So what happens? The culture starts getting affected. You're, 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 you're not saying anything, but you're literally opposing the culture. right? So it's like Daniels rising up, daring to be different. And that leaven begins to impact. So, see, the point is, as believers, we are talking so much about city transformation. But unless I live the gospel, and that can affect a change in my community, my society, okay, or, um, you know, wherever, where I am, how can I expect what I, I am living, you know, to affect a city or a nation so living the gospel out for every believer and imagine if every believer is simply being salt and light where god told them to be what an impact it'll have because the kingdom of god you start small it's leaven but it works through the entire batch and it will affect so we have to we have to live the gospel where ever God has posi positioned us. You know, I can just go on about this, but I'm trying not to. How about music? You know, there's so much uh, in the field of music. All kinds of lyrics is being sung. What if people start writing uh, in the secular world? You know, good lyrics. Lyrics that will um, build up the identity of young people. You know, release songs like that. Uh, it's going to affect culture. Okay, so we live out the gospel. We begin to affect culture in this way. And the Bible, you know, very clearly it says that we are supposed to be the, we are the good seeds. The, the children of God are the good seeds that have been planted in the world. There are tares. You know, the, the enemy comes and he plants his people. And there will be persecution from the, the opposers of the kingdom of God. And all of that. But then, you know, if we continue to be the good seed and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the representatives of the kingdom, surely it will bring about a transformation in the city. And every believer being like this, you know, it, it'll just be all the small lights. You know, have you seen those concerts where they hold up um, uh, mobile phones with, with a small uh, light on their phone? But when all of them do it, there's so much of light because all the light comes together to make this whole, you know, bright, impacting light. And the same is true about the lives of believers. It could be different areas we are addressing, you know, different things that we are um, contending towards, but we are making an impact. So we have to live that gospel the bible calls us that uh, calls us as um, you know the people who have the armor of light so we have to put it on put on the armor of light armor of righteousness and shine the gospel for the kingdom okay. and uh, again you know there's so many things you can just go back to history um and uh, look at 
times where social reformation has come as a result of as a result of um uh, believing in the gospel it was one individual a group of individuals believing in the gospel who spoke up against slavery you know believing in the gospel who spoke up against uh you know some sort of an injustice so it will make a difference as long as we are living the gospel it will make a difference then the next thing for city transformation you know what is the strategy stuck there are so many believers including myself where uh, when i was in college it was easy for me to live a righteous life in front of my friends uh, the only thing was that i didn't want to you know sometimes not always i have shared the gospel many times but sometimes i would hesitate i'd be like oh these people will not listen or i will be embarrassed let me not share about jesus with so and so so sharing the gospel is where believers hold back now why is it important you know in romans 1 verses 14 through 16 paul writes that hey this is the wisdom of god this is the wisdom of god which saves you know the 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 jews the greeks what the gospel it is the power of god unto salvation so if i don't share the gospel then i will not be giving a person an opportunity to respond to the gospel so as much as it is important for us to live the gospel we also have to share the gospel because that is the power of god unto salvation and it's when people respond to the gospel that you know you would you would uh, see many many souls coming into the kingdom just recently about 2 weeks ago i think i met this one lady she is from a certain uh, orthodox uh, background uh, i don't want to name the religion uh, but she came to christ you know many years uh, about 10 years ago and now she's a pastor with her husband so i asked her you know i asked her hey how did this happen how did you leave your uh, um uh, previous traditions and why did you why did you choose to follow jesus and she told me see i was in a crisis you know i i was having my delivery and i was told that my child is not um going to make it and so there were a lot of those issues and at that time we were crying out to different gods and you know i i really was so desperate and at that time her husband apparently he found a number of some christian you know call and we will pray that kind of a number he found that and he just called because he was so desperate and those people prayed uh, for um, his wife who was now on, in uh, undergoing delivery and uh, after prayer the person on uh, the call shared the gospel with this man and said so what do you think you know do you accept jesus he just said yes it was just one phone call one prayer shared the gospel would you like to accept jesus died for your sins you know he loves you um your sins can be forgiven if you repent you know accept the lord jesus christ and he will transform your life you know you will become a child of god basically shared the gospel jesus is the son of god he came to die for you what do you think almost immediately he said yes and he went to his wife who was still going through her labor pains and told her look everything is going to be okay i just prayed somebody prayed with me and uh, they also told me about jesus and from now i believe in jesus he told his wife and he asked her do you believe in jesus she just said yes so you see and i i was listening to this testimony and i asked her are you serious was it that simple somebody told you the gospel and they asked you whether you believe in jesus and you said yes she said yeah till that day nobody told us that day somebody told us we came to know and we put our trust in jesus there's no turning back and today we are pastors okay so i was amazed i felt like you know sometimes we are the ones who complicate it and we think 
people will not be ready to accept or you know they they will have issues if we share the gospel with them but not necessarily you see it is our responsibility to share the gospel because that is the power of god unto salvation uh, and therefore you know we have to be ready imagine you know a city in which we don't share the gospel we just live a very righteous life and people look at us and say oh these are followers of jesus wonderful and that's it but where is the invitation for people to come into the kingdom of god so we have to share the gospel okay share the gospel and let people make their own uh, decision so how do we share we can go where people go so again strategic right so we can think of strategic ways in which the gospel can be shared i know um, recently there are there are uh, uh, you know i how many of you were part of that um, power to change campaign that was something unique something different city wide where all the churches were gathered together and you know they uh, went and uh, ministered to many many people at the same time so you see these are all strategic ways in which the gospel can be shared or uh, it can be taken to to uh, institutions right it could be taken to institutions and you can share it there i know of people who have uh, spoken in uh, uh, you know some official meetings where they were invited pastors were invited to come and share the gospel so we can be strategic right and these days you have media the use of media so there are apps unique apps short films many ways in which we can do it you know there are websites that people use uh, so given the uh, freedom in a in a in a particular uh, nation or a city you know we don't have to break any laws we can uphold the constitution right we can follow the law of the land respect it honor it and at the same time we can share the gospel okay so it is possible and we we'll, we we'll really have to pray and think and ask god you know god you show us what is the strategic way in which we can share the gospel maybe you can share it with uh, um, you know tens of thousands of people at the same time if it is a strategic plan that's why we use the term strategic okay so sharing the gospel is so very important for city transformation and demonstrate the gospel demonstrate the gospel how do we demonstrate the gospel you see jesus we read in matthew 14 14 that you know he when he looked at the people he had compassion for the people and he healed the people so when i look at the hurting world around me god's power is what they need you know every time i talk to different people you know they we used to have that zoom call after church service uh, people will connect some of them you know uh, who are who are not believers but they connect on the call because they they are going through a desperate time i've met people you know just in general in church and elsewhere who say please pray for me i am going through a challenging time i am in a financial crisis somebody is sick in my family i am sick or i don't have a job or i am going through a divorce you see people are going through all kinds of challenges out there how would jesus respond you know if he heard that somebody is in pain Matthew 14 14 he saw them he had great compassion on them and he healed them so he intervened in their situation by releasing the power of god and so today as his representatives when we hear things like this immediately just pray and say holy spirit you know minister to them you know release a miracle in their lives let them you know get a job lord you bring uh, peace in their family lord you know you heal their bodies so demonstrating the gospel is to be moved with compassion and see the power of god released into people's lives so you know we can you we can follow the same model of jesus and see the supernatural works of god being manifested you know jesus said that isn't it you shall do greater works than these so we are called to 
move in the supernatural power of god so wouldn't it be wonderful if all believers you know we we pray and miracles start happening in people's lives we share the gospel and you know people's lives are transformed so that is what the believer should be doing okay so we said live the gospel share the gospel but also demonstrate the gospel just go ahead pray for somebody now i'm always overjoyed in in church when uh, some of our church folk you know they come up and say that i prayed for so and so they couldn't walk but now they are walking okay and i i remember very early on one of our uh, families in north church their daughter was so tiny at that time and she had fractured her leg and they were coming to church so i'd gone to visit them in their home uh so i asked that little girl at, at that time uh so what did you do and because you have a fracture now what did you do she immediately told me pastor i took my hand and i put it on my leg and i prayed and in jesus name and i asked jesus to heal my leg and i was so happy this was she so little i don't remember which class she was in but i was so happy that oh my goodness you see they understand that god's power can intervene in the situation that they are in so every believer like that imagine a little child has understood god's power is real god's power can heal me okay uh, and if every believer we say believer do we really believe and do we really go ahead and pray for people and trust that okay i will see god's power working in the lives of people maybe colleagues classmates neighbors anyone anyone who comes into contact with us maybe we just uh, rubbed uh, you know quickly met somebody at the airport or in the train station or in the bus but uh, we share when there is an opportunity we share and we say okay brother can i pray for you can i um, you know uh, you know that uh, jesus heals he delivers he can do a miracle in your situation take authority so why have we learned about spiritual authority because we can use it and we can see the power of god so when you see satan is doing an oppressive work he is bringing sickness on people you know he is um, working in other ways don't worry take authority and say i am going to pray for you okay and you will see god working in your life and in that manner what's happening you know the power of god is beginning to impact lives and how beautiful how beautiful that is till today let me tell you there are some people uh, that you know i continue to minister to they still don't believe till now they've never opened their mouth and said that i believe in jesus but when there is a need you know they'll always say pastor can you pray are they born again you know i don't know <laughs> but they never really said that i i am born again or i accept christ but they say pray why because they have seen the power of god in their situation but i believe it's like a seed you know uh, they are seeing god's glory and they cannot deny it that it is real god's power is real and uh, i'm trusting that you know they will accept christ uh, because you know he's a, a living god so okay let's just uh, stop here class i think there's one more point to go uh, in talking about the exercise of authority uh, and then we will move on to yeah the last chapter here we should be able to complete it in the next one hour okay so 10 minutes break everybody and we shall be back at uh, 11 o'clock okay thank you